Hey there, Worm people. Captain Matt here with Scott Kent. We're going to talk about a wonderful course that he has put together, and you can find it in wormpeople.com. So, Scott, thank you, and congratulations on the course. I am so excited for you guys. I'll, I can't tell you. Hey, Worm people. This is Luke. You might not see me too much. I'm normally behind the camera, but I'll be here uh, interacting, and I've really loved working with Scott to put this course together. With that, we'll pass it off to you, Scott. Awesome. Thank you, Captain Matt and Luke. Uh, we're going to try to keep this video short, like Captain Matt said, which is going to be very difficult. There's a lot of information, so... There's things I'm going to miss, but we'll try to be quick as, as possible. I've been worm farming since 2014, actually, is when I got my first worm bin. Uh, my, my farm is fueled by dairy manure, so I'll get several yards at a time. And I've got these uh, rolling rack systems set in place where I can roll these racks out, get the trays out, put manure in there and other additives and feed the worms. And I also have a, so that's my breeding operation, I guess, my breeding and grout bins. I've also got a, a five by 15 foot CFT that I, I bought from Terra Vesco as they were are, are going out of business. And so one of the last remaining relics of a great worm farm out there in California and a little bit of, of the worm castings. And that's my worm business. Uh, and, and microbiology is a big part of that. And that's what we're going to be talking about mostly today. And the first thing to know about the worm castings is it's not really about the nutrients. Um, you can pause this and, and read through the information here. But to, if you're just looking at nutrients of the worm castings, it's like using infinity stones as paperweights. Like these worm castings have so much power, so much ability to heal the earth and uh, restore life in the soil. But it, that's the microbiology. If you're looking at the nutrients, you're, it's like judging a fish on how well it can climb a tree, right? Like you're looking at the wrong... <laughs> The nutrients from worm castings, nothing, essentially nothing. It's all about the microbiology. Now, Captain Matt, do you know what infinity stones are? Um, <laughs> I, I was going to Google that as soon as we got off. <laughs> infinity Scott, stones. Start, the 30 second infinity stone definition. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm probably not the qualif most qualified to, to mention this, but it's from the Marvel Cinematic Universe where these infinity stones, if you have all of them, you can pretty much do whatever whatever you want create and destroy reality control time a bunch a bunch of stuff uh, and, and, wh and where do i get these <laughs> <laughs> but we have worm castings and they're just as powerful that that's the point right uh, gotcha gotcha and that's yeah. an understood point also and so i want to show you this is a picture of uh, a pretty typical soil i got this from some agricultural soil in my area pretty typical soil is going to look like this you're not going to see much anything in it except for soil and bacteria. Bacteria is a very hardy microorganism. It's you, you, it's going to be, it's pretty much omnipresent in, in soils. But this is what it's missing. Look at all this, uh, you know, the organic matter, which isn't really biology, but it's, you know, formed by biology. But you got this beautiful piece of fungal hyphae coming in from the top left and going down the middle and up through the middle again. You've got this nematode. You've got this testate amoeba just a little bit above the, the nematode. All these microorganisms are playing huge roles in the soil ecosystem. They are the organ. If the soil is a body, the organs of the soil are the organisms. They're creating nutrient cycling. They're fighting pests and diseases. They're forming structure. Um, they're doing all, all these things that living soil should be able to do uh, as are performed by the organs of the soil, which are the organisms. So the main organisms you got, you got amoeba, um, there's naked amoeba, which is this guy in the center. It's kind of hard to see. He's amorphous. He doesn't really have a shape. You have testate amoeba. So it's the same thing as a naked amoeba, but it has a shell or a test. So he's clothed. He's not naked. He's a testate amoeba. Here's some pictures uh, on the left is a flagellate. And those are kind of hard to, to capture in video or picture either. They're, they're pretty small, hard to see. Um, and there's a big nematode there on the right. And those are the main organisms that we're looking for is bacteria, protozoans, which includes flagellates, amoeba, and ciliates and maybe some others that aren't quite so beneficial, but uh, they're, they're included too, and, and nematodes. So we kind of talked about how much worm castings you would need to provide the nutrients necessary to grow a certain crop in a certain area. Um, this is, if you're looking at it biologically, people are finding success with one pound worm castings for an entire acre of farmland. And so oh, it's world's difference, it's astronomically different. Um, you know, I think if you're looking at nutrients, people might say a pound per square foot. An acre is like 45,000 square feet. And who, who, who can buy 45,000 pounds of worm castings to put on, on a single acre? And so this is, a, this is a work done by Dr. Johnson and his wife. Um, their system is commonly referred to as the Johnson Sioux um, Bioreactor or the Biologically Enhanced Agricultural Management System. And these are some of their results. You can pause and look at it, but 
they're using one pound to the acre and finding really good results from that. Uh, this is uh, one of their, a person who's used Johnson Sioux compost. He's a, he's a young red Angus. Again, you can pause and look at this if you'd like, but he's finding phenomenal results using this biological method. And of course, the soil food web uh, by Dr. Elaine Ingham is a, is a huge presence in the uh, biological agriculture sphere world. Todd Harrington, this is some of his work following the soil food web methods that Dr. Elaine Ingham uh, ha has set up. And again, using, I think this is seven gallons of compost tea to the acre. This one is 20 gallons of compost tea and some, uh, a little bit more. But, you know, we're, we're talking about very, very small amounts of worm castings because you don't need too many organisms because they reproduce. If you put nutrients in the field, the plant takes them up, they're gone. But if you put the organisms that create nutrients in the soil, they can reproduce and just literally, I mean, there's, there's of course, uh, parameters to this, but literally they can get essentially infinite nutrients there from the soil with just adding, just inoculating it with the uh, necessary microorganisms. My mind is blown at how little the right um, tea or extract, but I'm just, just hearing this again, it just, it blows my mind that, that, that small amount can take care of the acreage that it can and understanding to, you, we're putting microbi microorganisms into the ground that weren't there before and if the ground can can maintain them and just multiply you know a million times over that is so awesome just awesome yeah and Scott, how is that typically applied uh, to the field yeah so it's it's really going to depend on on the situation um, you can do it just through a like, irrigation system or if you're doing flood irrigation uh, through a sprayer, it, it really just depends on, on the situation. But the, the best way to get the microorganisms off your solid worm is to create an extract or a tea. I, either way, you're going to you're going to want something that's got a 400 micron mesh. So first, obviously, you got to make sure the worm castings actually have the necessary microbiology and that's done with a microscope and we'll talk about that uh, you know this is what the course is for is so you can actually go and look at it and make sure the organism is there first of all and then you'll put them in a like a compost tea bag like um this one in the picture make a brew or something like this this is mine and uh keep it aerated and uh, the air pump or you can also just physically use your hands to massage that extract the organisms off of the solid worm castings and get them suspended in the water. That way you can spray them out on the fields or um, add it to the irrigation or drip lines or whatever system you're using. And that would work for an extract or a tea. Yeah, how much water per gallon of extract approximately? So that is a really good question that kind of leads into why I think this course is so important for anyone who's working with biologicals is because it's like um, th there's no quality issue. I guess, if you will, with extracts and teas, um, you know, if you add one pound of worm castings and you put a single drop of molasses and you add a hundred gallons of water, you know, it's one pound of mixed with a hundred gallons, still a tea. But you know, if you compare that to one that's one pound of worm castings and only ten gallons of water, it's still a tea, right? So it's like, how do you know how much to dilute it when you don't? Right. It's like, you know, how much. I, I mentioned like getting a getting a drink somewhere and you know if if ninety percent of your cup is full of ice, you just paid for like the most expensive water of your life, you know, like you know the microbial density of the extract and tea to know how much to dilute it. And so that's why the course is so important. That's why it's so important to know how microbial dense your extracts and teas are so you know what you are actually getting, the the actual work that's done by that, uh, you know, how many organisms are actually in that volume of water. So you know how much to dilute it, you know how far it can go, what to price it for. Okay, yeah. Awesome. So this is kind of the vision I had for the course. And so on, on the left, it's actually a mini compost that I developed. It's running just off a, a mini aquarium bubbler. But you can take your extract, your tea, whatever, and put it under the microscope and actually look at what's inside of it. You can identify the bacteria, the fungi, the protozoans, the nematodes, and you can quantify it. So you can know, hey, in my... You know, if it's worm castings, extracts, or tea, or whatever, you can say, I know that worm castings have, you know, 100 or 200 micrograms per gram as 
100 micrograms of fungi per gram and et cetera for all the different organisms, then you can also compare that to your extract and see, okay, I'm able, I'm able to extract only half of it. Maybe I need to be doing a better process or, hey, I'm extracting a lot of it. It's doing well. Just to be able to ensure the mm-hmm. making it to that point. And then for teas, and this is huge, is you can actually measure uh, bef- biology before you add your tea food, whatever it is, and you can measure it over time and see how that affects the biology. And so compost teas especially are, are volatile, and you can actually make a worm tea that, that hurts that hurts your plants or is, is detrimental to certain things. And so, so this is a test that I, I did, and you will be able to do um, things very similar to this with having gone through the course. So I took some Johnson Sioux compost. I took a pound of it, and I mixed it with eight gallons of water to make an extract. This first column here, the top one, this is the microorganisms per gram that I had in my worm castings. Then I had a th- about a thousand grams of it. So total down here, total in that thousand grams of worm castings I had, that's the total amount of uh, microorganisms that I had. Then I extracted it and then this is what came through. So per milliliter up here, but you know, total, this is what I was able to extract. And so it looks like I didn't get all the fungi or the bacteria, my numbers went down. And that happens, you know, it's, you might not get total extraction efficiency. But then after I ran the T and I added some fish hydrolysate to it, um, these were the final numbers that I got. So here at the bottom, you can see how much the, the fungi in the back produced, um, like, you know, up to 2.1 billion protozoans from 114 protozoans. And the fungi increased as well, which is great. And the, the bacteria actually decreased. And that's partially because the protozoans eat bacteria. But part of this process as well is that when you're looking at your tea, you can, you can measure when it's best to use because the microbial population will fluctuate. And so I did uh, two different tests. The first time I did 25 milliliter fish hydrolysate. And I found that after 12 hours, it was going a little bit anaerobic. I was starting to see spirochete. If you're using molasses, this is super prone to happen where your molasses will make a bad compost tea. And molasses... That's a whole other topic. Molasses is really not the best ingredient to be using in your compost tea. You know, there's, there's a certain point, if you use your tea and it's gone anaerobic, it can be detrimental to your organisms. And so you want to be able to have a micro or detrimental to your plants. So you want to be able to have a microscope to be able to tell, hey, is this staying beneficial? Or if it does go bad, you know, generally it can recover. And so just making sure you're using your tea at peak microbial population as well. And comparing the differences, like you can see, I, after this one with 25 milliliters, I decided to dial it down to 12 and uh, things looked a little bit better there. And that's where these numbers came from as well. So I was able to use a microscope to use an informed decision about my tea recipe that um, made sure that things were a lot more beneficial. It's just amazing to, to be able to, and, and with the course, Scott, you're giving this to uh, anyone that buys the course, but you're, you're giving them a whole new world to, um, to enter, you know, it's not just raising worms. Now it's raising worms with a level of, of awareness that people just wouldn't have if they didn't didn't have the opportunity to share, you know, learn about this and and the fact that you've taken so much information and put it together in in this course, and that someone after your course can actually sit down with their own microscope and do their own analysis of their teas and their extracts. That is just phenomenal. Um, Just some other things that I wanted to mention, some other use cases for this microbiology. You want to be able to actually explain, my worm castings have good microbiology because I've seen it. And this is the microbiology that's in there. A lot of people are just assuming because they care a lot about their worms that there's good microbiology. That's not always the case. So making sure your castings actually have the microbiology and you can prove it, your extract and your teas. Besides that, you can test your feed stocks, um, how that influences the microbiology. Like people ask about biochar all the time. Like, well, but biochar help my microbiology. I don't know. Go figure it out. You have the skills now. Put, you know, look at your castings before yeah. you have biochar, look at it after. Storage methods. People ask about, you know, what storage method is best? You know, how, which one will help my biology preserve my biology the best and I don't know go find out you know how you now have the skills you can look at the biology before then you know try your different storage methods after like it gives you so much like it allows you to answer so many of your own questions about how will this affect my worm casting so go ask people and they can give you their guesses and or you can go look at it under the microscope for yourself for your situation at your temperature at your humidity with your microbiology with your feedstock so this gives you tools to be able to actually assess the quality and answer a lot of those questions for for yourself in your own situation this will cover your basis for now at least and if they get real serious then they move on to you know 
uh, t studying a little more, but this is just phenomenal. I'm really blown away. Yeah. yeah, and terrific for all the folks that are going to farmers markets now. We just saw over the weekend in the Worm People community, saw three new people setting up booths at farmers markets. They had a great day selling their castings and made some profit. But how much better would that be if they could include the microbial analysis that speaks to what is in it and the viability? Yeah. yeah. You know, when I first started working with worms, the microbial content, you know, it didn't even interest me. I just wanted to raise worms and get some castings and plant my garden. But now, as common as a red wiggler is, now microbiology has become that that important, that it become just part of any anyone that's serious about worming and sharing their products with other people to be able to have your microbiology count on the bag that day or on the on the package that that's awesome maybe only 50% of the people will even care about that from my experience in the market people just trusted me that it was worm castings and that was good enough but boy we're entering a new world that is expanding congratulations again scott you go to uh, wormpeople.com and click the learn button or if if you're on mobile, you tap the menu and uh, click the learn button. Uh, Scott's course will be right there. The price is $80. So uh, wormpeople.com if you're interested in uh, reading more about uh, what the course can offer. Okay. And along with the course comes a private forum uh, in the wormpeople.com community that uh, Scott will be in there and all the other folks who have are taking the course. They'll be sharing their own photos of their findings and their microbiology. And it will be a great learning experience. That will in turn improve course and you'll get lifetime access to the course with your purchase so uh, thank you scott for uh, walking us through that thank you captain matt this is the first of probably many worm people teacher courses you know when we find people that know more than we do we want to get them out there especially people that are active in the community and really just helping people out and that, that's really our heart when we see you know scott when we first met you and just watched you in the forum there was no question about you had a heart and a desire to get all this out there and share with people and that's what we're looking for is people with the same type of heart weren't people that's it for tonight god bless you we'll see you real soon subscribe now and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey